Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 29 of 2023 during the first session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representative Councils as of Monday, June the 5th. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Salman Al Masalam, on the issuance of the Royal Order to adjourn the first session of the sixth legislative term. The Speaker expressed thanks for His Majesty's support and the follow-up of the Council's work with the aim of achieving the interest of the Kingdom and its people. He hailed the support of His Majesty to the Council, which is considered one of the results of His Majesty the King's reform project. He pledged allegiance to His Majesty and to strive to achieve progress and development for the Kingdom and its people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Asala, on the issuance of the Royal Decree to adjourn the first session of the sixth legislative term. Asala expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his continuous support and follow up on the Legislative Authority's work, expressing pride in the democratic and legislative march, whose achievements and successes are increasing as a result of the directives of His Majesty the King for the Kingdom's growth and prosperity to continue and support Bahrain's development and progress during His Majesty's prosperous era. He reiterated the pledge to His Majesty the King to continue on His Majesty's directives and visions and achieve further successes and achievements for the Kingdom and its people. The Kingdom joins the world in marking World Environment Day, which comes this year under the theme Solutions to Plastic Pollution. The personal representative of His Majesty the King and Chairman of the Supreme Council for the Environment, the SCE, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stated that Bahrain is one of the first countries to take measures to reduce plastic pollution, in line with the UN initiatives since 2019, through a number of national laws and legislation. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah noted the importance of highlighting environmental issues in this day and continuing to address environmental challenges which include waste management and reducing the effects of plastic pollution, especially plastic waste and the reuse instead of disposal. His Highness said that upon the directors of His Majesty the King, the SEE developed many initiatives and studies to protect the environment and the climate, noting that these initiatives are being followed up by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah stressed the role of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Projects in cooperation with the partner government agencies, noting that the initiatives rely on the principle of extended producer responsibility and supporting recycling. His Highness stated that reducing plastic pollution requires social contribution, urging all stakeholders to enhance environmental cooperation to reduce waste and any potential plastic pollution affecting the environment. A joint charitable work committee for GCC countries was inaugurated, which came at the initiative of His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to form a coordinating body for charitable work and the presence of delegations from GCC countries, which stems from His Highness's belief in unifying efforts made by GCC countries regarding the provision of humanitarian and relief aid during disasters. His Highness expressed appreciation for the humanitarian role played by His Majesty the King and His Majesty's support of the charitable and humanitarian work inside and outside the Kingdom. His Highness affirmed that His Majesty's directives were the first catalyst and inspiration for the work of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. He praised the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of the humanitarian work Bahrain is carrying out, stressing that Bahrain is a pioneer in providing aid and assistance to all. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to their Majesties and Highnesses, the leaders of the GCC countries for the prominent humanitarian role that they assigned to charitable work and for the generous support and guidance to advance humanitarian work and extend a helping hand to the needy and affected people in various parts of the world.
فيوم الدكتور مصطفى يقول مبروك هو الحقيقه يعني فعلا يقصد ما قاله لان احنا من عام 2012 نشتغل على هذه الفكره دكتور والحمد لله في دار هذه الفكره هي الامانه العامه لدول الاستعان في النهايه شفنا ان هذه الفكره فعلا مجديه و تعطي الدور الاكبر وتوحد جهودنا وتوحد قوتنا في المكان اللي احنا نجتمع فيه لان الحقيقه احنا زرنا اماكن كثيره دول منكوبه ودول في وضع الحرب دول واجهت مصاعب نكون موجودين هناك ونشوف اعلام دول مجلس التعاون وهذا شيء يكون يعني اكبر فخر واكبر شرف لنا نحن نشوف هذه الاعلام كلها موجوده. فجزء من المقترح اللي احنا وضعناه نحن كنا يعني نبي يكون تواجدنا مثل ما هو بس في الصميم وفي في الامر اللازم وعدم تكرار يعني المعن وال يعني الامور والمساعدات و اللي احنا نرسلها من الدول، طبعا احنا كلنا الحمد لله نتنافس على هذا الشيء، كلنا نتنافس على الخير، وكلنا نتنافس على من يوصل اول، وكلنا نتنافس على من هو يمد يد العون لاخوه. الحمد لله على الخير اللي احنا فيه، والحمد لله على الوضع اللي احنا فيه، نحن يد العون واحنا اليد اللي تقدم المساعده. هذه جاتنا مخلطه من اجدادنا، وهذه في تراثنا، وهذه في عرقنا، وهذه في ديننا الحقيقي. انه مساعده الاخر. فالحمد لله على هذه القيادات الموجودة في دول مجلس التعاون هذه القيادات اللي من شغلة في صرف طاقتها ومواردها للمواطن وهذه القيادات اللي فعلا من شغلة في التخطيط للأجيال القادمة ما هي من شغلة في التخطيط للانتخابات القادمة هذا ولله الحمد النعمة اللي احنا عايشين فالشكر موصول لكم لتحقيق هذه الرؤيه وما في شك كلنا في ندين لقياداتنا العمل اللي يقومون به لخدمه المواطن اولا في الداخل وثم خدمه المحتاجين سواء كانوا في الداخل او الخارج ما هم قصرين ولا الحمد وهذا اقل واجب احنا نقدر نسويه ان احنا فعلا بس نوحد جهودنا ويصير عملنا ادق يصير عملنا في المكان اللي احنا نتجه له دائما سوى مؤثر بشكل ايجابي واكبر والله ان شاء الله نوفق واللي تامرون فيه احنا كمؤسسه هذه مؤسستكم والافكار موجوده وكل اللي نتمناه احنا ان شاء الله ان احنا نحط يدنا بيد بعض ونروي العالم ان هذه القيادات وهذا النوع من التكاتف والتعاون في دول مجلس التعاون هو المثل الذي يضربه ان شاء الله المثل في دول العالم. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman Ali Al Saleh. The session approved the report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee and the draft law approving the state's general budget for the fiscal years 2023 to 2024. The Council approved the report of the Foreign Affairs, Defence and National Security Committee on a draft law ratifying the agreement between the governments of Bahrain and Turkmenistan on air services. The session also approved the report of the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee on a draft law ratifying the direct facilitation agreement for the water transmission project associated with Aldur Independent Power and Water Desalination Plant. Delegated by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa participated in the inauguration ceremony of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on the occasion of his re-election as President of Turkey for a new term. In a written message, the Deputy Prime Minister conveyed the congratulations of His Majesty the King to the President and wishes of success to achieve the aspirations of the Turkish people towards further progress and prosperity. On this occasion, as Sheikh Khalid affirmed, the pride of the leadership of His Majesty the King in the relations between the two countries in various fields. 
He reiterated the kingdom's keen desire to expand cooperation and partnership by maximising the benefit from the developmental potentials enjoyed by the two countries to achieve common interests between them and for the benefit and development of the two brotherly people. The Deputy Prime Minister attended the dinner banquet hosted by the Turkish President in honour of world leaders and the representatives who participated in the inauguration ceremony. Under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Ashik Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jadila Hassan, and a number of senior officials, the National Committee to Control Smoking and All Types of Products of Tobacco celebrated the World New no Tobacco Day under the theme Let's Plant Food, Not Tobacco. On the occasion, the SE, its chairman, affirmed that Bahrain, as a result of the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, made remarkable achievements as part of the Comprehensive Development March, which included many sectors, the most important of which is health and the field of disease prevention. He noted that the occasion is an opportunity to raise the community's awareness on the harmful effects of tobacco as it comes in coordination with the World Health Organization's call on the importance of community efforts and partnerships to support effective plans, policies and procedures to combat smoking and reduce its use. The event included many educational segments on the effects of smoking on health. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, inaugurated the third conference and exhibition of the National Health Regulatory Authority. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed delivered a speech in which he expressed pride in the support the medical sector receives from His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He stressed that this conference is a comprehensive umbrella for all partners and stakeholders in the health sector and an important platform for conducting extensive discussions on regulatory issues and standards required in light of the trend to implement the health insurance programme and the required change in the health system of Bahrain. For her part, the CEO of the National Health Regulatory Authority, Dr Miriam Ajalama, said that the conference comes this year at a very important time when the health industry is witnessing many challenges represented in governance, maintaining quality and the difficulty of providing qualified professionals with experience. She highlighted the importance of communication and cooperation between health institutions and regulatory authorities to discuss these challenges and facilitate procedures without prejudice to the quality requirements of health services to provide health care for patients. The Minister of Education, Dr Mohamed Juma, approved the final results of secondary school students and the third grade of preparatory stage after the completion of all correction, monitoring and review processes. He expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the support the educational process receives, which had a great impact in the progress of the students' educational levels and enabled Bahrain's educational system to make achievements in various regional and international forums. The Minister expressed pride in the efforts of the employees of the educational field, which contributed to the academic year's success. He revealed the total number of students who took the final exams for the secondary school certificate for the academic year 2022 to 2023 reached 7,131, of whom 7,011 passed, with a rate of 98.3%. With regard to the results of the preparatory school certificate, the Minister noted that the number of students who took the exam reached 12,950, of whom 9,317 passed, with a rate of 72%. He indicated that the results of the primary stage and the first and second grades of the intermediate stage will be available tomorrow. Juma affirmed that the Ministry's plan for scholarships will be announced next month stressing that only criterion for these scholarships will be the cumulative average of students in the secondary school certificate, adding that details of the plan will be announced during the next stage.
The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met with Minister of State at the German Federal Foreign Ministry, Dr. Tobias Lindner, on the sidelines of the 20th Shangri La Dialogue held in Singapore. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah praised the close historical relations between Bahrain and Germany. During the meeting, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah praised the progress and development of the Bahraini-German relations within the framework of the two countries' keenness to consolidate partnership in various fields and the support for efforts to consolidate security, peace and development at a regional and international levels. Dr. Lindner expressed his country's pride in a solid political and economic partnership with Bahrain and its appreciation for its initiatives in supporting security and stability and spreading the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs also met with the second Under Secretary at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Singapore, Luc Jo. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed the bilateral relations and means to enhance them in various political, economic and social fields. They also discussed regional and international issues of common interest to enhance security and peace and advance sustainable development efforts in the region and the world. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce announced the launch of the Consumer Protection Initiative for commercial establishments concerned with the selling and trading commodities and food products in markets in all governorates of the Kingdom. The Assistant Under Secretary for Domestic and Foreign Trade, Sheikh Hamad bin Salman Al Khalifa, said that this initiative demonstrates the Department's keenness to provide greater availability of commodities and food products to achieve social responsibility by the private sector towards consumers, citizens and residents in Bahrain. He noted that the initiative aims to reduce the price of 10 food commodities out of 15 by no less than 10% with the participation of major commodities and food shops by offering the lowest price for commodities and food products to consumers. Sheikh Hamad affirmed that the names of the commercial establishments participating in the initiative will be published and the list of commodities and food products included in the initiative will also be reviewed to facilitate consumers' access to commodities and prices.